After a few weeks overseas, away from the daily drip of U.S. news, I'm home and horrified and thinking about Karl Polanyi. One of the 20th century's great economic historians, Polanyi wrote about economics, but he started with humanity. What does it take to create a willing worker, a follower, a servant? What makes a person pliant, he asked. To explain it, Polanyi looked at colonizers who cut down fruit trees and olive groves and uproot relationships to break apart autonomous social networks. Smash society and you create craven people. Craven from the early English word meaning crushed, defeated, overwhelmed. You can probably see where I'm going with all this. We as humans are born into relationship literally by accord. What does it take to break apart us, social beings, and turn us into fearful, atomized ones, the ones I feel us becoming as we scurry about in our endless days, trying to make ends meet and digest the news while the news we get becomes ever more shocking and more dire. Award-winning cartoonist Jen Sorensen put her finger on it in an insightful strip about what's been happening on the border. Families aren't the only things being separated, she says. Americans, too, are being divided from their conscience. Forced separation from our conscience, she warns, can lead to national trauma, even national suicide. So is that what this is? This sadness that I'm feeling? Smashing society is what authoritarians do, and Donald Trump is great at it. In a pep rally for his troops, I mean voters, Trump announced a change from family separation to family incarceration, indefinitely. Will we stomach that? He also insulted a protester, disparaged the press, and boasted about how well he got along with the dictator of North Korea. Breaking us apart from one another, insult by insult, threat by threat, is how Trump seized the presidency in the first place. But it's important to remember that we were already pretty broken. Without even delving into the nation's history of genocide and slavery, the statistics are dire. On any given day in the U.S., half a million kids are in foster care. They stay there on average for a couple of years and some for five years or longer. More than half are children of color and their average age is nine. Another 60,000 children under 18 years of age are incarcerated in prisons and jails. This state of affairs, I repeat, is normal, but only in a broken society. We're not done for yet. As I write, protesters are occupying immigration authority offices around the country with their children. Women are preparing for mass arrests. Images and sound bites of kids in cages has apparently hit a nerve that rescinding DACA for 800,000 dreamers did not, that ending temporary protection for 248,000 refugees didn't, and that denying asylum to thousands of victims of war and violence has so far failed to do. No, we are not at national suicide point yet, and there are ways to re-knit our social fabric, like all those we feature on our show. But will the nation make that choice to reconnect with our conscience? Only time will tell. Write to me. Tell me what you think. That's Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at lauraflanders.org. And thanks. Mm -hmm.